That's uh, one small step for Omi, and one giant leap for the VV app. Yo, what's going on my VV OGs, my Omi homies, and everybody else on YouTube? It's your bromi, the Gale. Back at it again with another VV AMA recap video. Alright, so allow me to set the stage, if you will. Ikomi has uh, these AMAs bi-weekly now, and in these AMAs, this is where you want to be if you're invested in Omi or the collectibles, or if you're thinking about investing in Omi or the collectibles. Um, this AMA was very bullish, and this one I think moved Omi to um, a big price increase this week. And uh, yeah, this is where I get all of my information. This is how I become so knowledgeable about my investment because I listen to these at least twice. And this is how I know what to buy in the in the marketplace. This is how I know what a good deal is because I know it's coming down the pipeline. This is why I have um, you know faith in the project because I know what's coming and the Ecomi team is very transparent. So that's what you're gonna hear in this AMA. I cut it down, I curated this to the best questions and everything that you're gonna to wanna to hear from this particular AMA. So if you wanna get through it quicker, feel free to watch this at like 1.5x speed or greater, or you can watch it at normal speed if you have the time. So without further ado, let's just breeze it. Any VB verse updates? Yes, so likewise, um, and, and as I think I might have mentioned in a couple of previous AMAs that, uh, uh, you know, pr pr uh, prior to Marvel months, there was uh, a lot of work going on to get that, uh, to get that month underway and, and behind us. And now that, uh, now that we have, um, well, I've had a lot more time to spend uh, you know, uh, uh, continuing to scope out what what the VU verse is. So uh, I think I might have touched on um, in the in the previous uh, AMAs that within the VV verse, yes, you will be able to buy land. Um, yes, there will be avatars and they will be customizable. You'll be able to buy, you know, NFT related accessories and upgrades, some of which will be branded, some which which won't be branded. Um, and, and, and again, also a lot of other kind of utility um, around Omi uh, in the in the VVverse. So, for example, when we uh, buy, sorry, when we eventually sell the land, mm -hmm. um, you can purchase that with fiat if you want to, but you can also uh, choose to purchase it with Omi, and uh, that Omi will be basically any Omi spent on on land or, or really anything that's sort of non IP that we don't have obligation on. Uh, will all be burnt. So the whole idea is to, you know, implement these cool features that uh, and products that that people want, um, and to really just start to, you know, diminish that that circulating supply. Yeah, yeah, really create that scarcity, which um, you know is all based on demand. We have a very sustainable model and system, um, so it's nice to see all of that really coming together and starting to take shape. From that, um, I know that you guys have the Omi Utility article coming out. Um, I was just wondering if you could provide any sort of additional information in terms of uh, what kind of, uh, I guess, what could possibly contribute to more Omi burn with regards to the gaming side, or is the burn going to be significant in comparison to like the secondary market burn? Um, just, just any sort of information regarding it, if you had anything else. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I'm surprised there's no conspiracy theories this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, now just to touch on the gamification. So I, I think the, you know, the, the, the first thing to, th that I'd like to just reiterate is that ultimately the VBverse will, will start off as a social area, you know, and within that, um, basically, you know, you will have your own, your, your own home, which is, a hugely extended version of the of the showrooms as you have now, um, with a lot more tools in there for you to you know place objects, adjust lighting. You can add different levels, different rooms, um, and uh, so it's going to be more around that. And then there will be these sort of larger um, central centralized areas within the within the VBverse, 
um, like, I don't know, DB City or whatever we call it, where, you know, you'll, you'll be able to go and, you know, do social things with the community. Now, when it comes to the gamification, um, ultimately, we do want to add that in there. I mean, my dream is that, you know, part of the VVverse, you go over to the VV racetrack and then you can bust out your Ecto-1 or your DeLorean. Um, and then, you know, you can race around there and there'll be sort of a, uh, like a leaderboard and that type of thing. Um, I can hear um, uh, in my mind Trevor rolling his eyes already. <laughs> um, but um, the when it, when it comes to gamification, it can be quite complex. I mean, even the simplest game, you know, there, there can be a lot of mechanics around it. So I don't want to say or promise that there is going to be massive gamification, especially right at the beginning. Um, but obviously, as the, the VVverse evolves, uh, you know, in the same way that the app does, um, we know we know gamification to some degree is is very high on on people's list and and it's a huge um, you know driver to you know to or retention tool to bring people back into the VVverse. So uh, it will happen, <clears throat> um, but just don't expect you know massive gamification to come out kind of on day one. The VVverse is going to be rolled out uh, in different sec- sections. You know, starting off with your uh, with re- really what is kind of like a, a showroom V3 or basically the showroom on steroids. Um, and then from there, we'll start, we'll begin to open up other areas of the VVverse that, that people can enter into. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to the OMI burn, so as I mentioned earlier, um, really anything within the, uh, the VVverse that, uh, that the company um, doesn't, have to pay royalties or, you know, it, it, all of those other kind of costs that the company uh, has to bear, um, those items will be available for sale in OMI. So like land, um, that could be avatar, avatars, which, you know, maybe have non-branded items um, and, and a whole range of other things. So the the idea really is to, as, as we start to implement this OMI utility, um, it is about primarily about burning so you know we if you if you were to buy something through the vvverse or buy some land um you know that omi is not going to come back to to the company um it's going straight to the burn wallet and and out of existence um so yeah that's that, that's all i'll say on the topic for now and there'll be some more information uh in the article that will release shortly are you guys going to move all 750 billion omi to immutable including the burns Yes, is the answer to that. Basically, we're, we're really just doing a full migration from, from one chain to another chain. Great. And just, just on that, um, just to extend that, there's that uh, we do have 97 billion or thereabouts locked in, in smart contracts. Will they be staying behind then? I assume we can't access those. Is there? Yeah, there's not much we can do there. My, my plan is to stay alive for 37,000 years. So when they actually die, <laughs> um, <clears throat> unlock. I'll be a rich man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'll be there, Lord, Lord of the VVS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. That's good to uh, good to know as well. One other question I do get on that note, which some people may be wondering: once we're across onto Immutable, will the Burn Wallet actually be a Burn Wallet? You know, there's, there was some early concerns about um, the way we had. Things yes, set up. it will 100% be a Burn Wallet. It might be too early for this, but I had kind of a general question about the land and the VVverse once we get to that point. Um, my main question is, um, are you guys looking into having enough for everybody that would want one? Um, are you guys going to kind of like mint a lot of um, a lot of those just to kind of ensure that everyone gets one or gets a chance to get one? Or would it be kind of like a limited yeah, that's a great question. Um, so th- the land will be limited because effectively each piece of land will be a- an NFT in its own its a- in a- its own right. So um, for that reason, it will be limited. Um, <clears throat> and the land that you'll be able to purchase will be around specific areas within the VVverse. Uh, however, if you don't have it, you don't actually have to have any land. Um, you know, you can still exist in uh, your, your showroom or your home can, can exist in what we call the ether, which basically means that, you know, you exist in the VVverse, but you don't necessarily, uh, your home isn't necessarily placed on a, on a piece of land. So while we, we will calculate the numbers fairly carefully on, uh, on how much land is out there, we do also want to make it a limited edition 
item. You know, obviously, if you manage to get in early enough, or you know, you you, you manage to win the auction uh, to get the land, <clears throat> you know, that's a in, in a way, it's another form of a of a collectible. Um, however, in saying that, as we open up different parts of the VVverse, um, you will be able to buy additional land around those areas. So, even if you were to miss the first land sale. Um, there will, as the VVverse expands, there will more than likely be more land <coughs> coming into the uh, coming into the market. Scott asks, will we have Omi slash ETH pairings on new exchanges? Uh, that really comes down to the exchanges. Uh, obviously, that's the you know the ideal pairing <coughs> that we'd we'd like to go for, but uh, often it's it's not a decision that is is made by us. So we'll really just have to wait and see there. And uh, you did just mention version two. I know a lot of people are waiting for showroom version two. Do we have any updates on that front? Yes. So basically that is completely ready. Um, the only last thing that we need to do, because uh, obviously, you know, a lot of our fans up to date have built some just crazy epic uh, showrooms in, in the version one. <clears throat> um, so we we absolutely want to make sure that those all remain in place. Now, the the showroom files themselves are, are quite big, so we're just doing a little bit of re-engineering <clears throat> on the app uh, so that those showrooms essentially become downloadable content. So if you, uh, if you already have an account and that account has a version one showroom or multiple version one showrooms, um, you will be able to keep them. And then uh, I think, as I might have mentioned pr previously, any new showroom that you create going forward uh, will use the new the new showroom V2. So a little bit of a uh, a badge of, of honor, I guess, for our OGs who have the have the showroom version one. Um, and just just so just so the fans know, um, if you if you delete those showroom version one. Um, and, and so you've got no version one, then, then you won't be able to create another one again. So just make sure that if you do have a showroom version one and you want to keep it, um, just keep that showroom uh, listed in your collection and, and don't delete it because otherwise moving forward, the only one you'll be able to create uh, is the version two. Yeah, very, uh, very sound advice. And uh, yeah, I, I really like that. It is a bit of a... A badge for the OGs, I think that's uh, that version one. So that's um, that's exciting. So we're expecting that then up in the next couple of weeks, I guess. Have we got any? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the on okay. the timeline with that. It is a little bit of a re-engineer. Obviously, the, the the showroom right now is kind of integrated into the app, but uh, like I say, you know, we need to turn that into downloadable content, and that also gives us the opportunity to um, bring out other showrooms in the future as well. So the, the, this, this is a, a sort of a, a bit of a delay on the, on the release of that, but ultimately it's going to provide more, more scope for, you know, different, different downloadable showrooms uh, in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Which I know that quite a lot of people are looking forward to that branded customization and, and other options there. So, okay. That's a great update. A um, few other big ticket items. Uh, people are waiting on the MTL or the ability to cash out. Now I know we've updated people recently that we are in the final stages of compliance and legal sign off and, and those things. Any update on that front? Yep, it's all coming along very well. So going, still going through some of the final bits of compliance with our uh, payment partner. And then I believe the last thing we need to do is just some integration with the banking institution. Uh, and then we'll be pretty much done. Now, uh, I probably mentioned this on the on a previous AMA, um, but just just so everyone listening understands the the rollout strategy is that uh, <clears throat> once that uh, once the gem to fiat is ready, um, which will all be available through the web wallet, um, which I believe is omi.vv.me, <clears throat> um, we will be uh, initially for the first couple of weeks anyway. Um, inviting in a few select users to to participate in that. And the whole idea really is that, you know, we just need to be careful that uh, we don't want to open it up to our entire audience immediately with, you know, with such a, uh, a sort of sensitive feature. So <clears throat> the idea there is that we'll basically open up to a small group of, of users 
they can go through, do the test uh, on their on their side, make sure everything's working perfectly. Uh, and then uh, for all the OGs who remember back in the day with uh, all of the, the market uh, going mm. offline, coming back online, uh, it'll be fairly similar to that, as in we'll be inviting users in, in batches and then eventually open it up to the uh, to the to the wider audience. Now, I hope that will be will be a fairly short period of time. Um, but like I say, you know, we just we need to make sure that with with such a sensitive feature that um, everything is working as it should. Which uh, for anyone who's encoding knows that it always goes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Always goes perfect. And uh, you know, as you said, we are obviously dealing with quite a lot of value and people's money and assets. So um, you know, these these things have to be done right. <laughs> And uh, I think we still have quite a cohort of OGs who will remember the market rollout. So hopefully, exactly uh, through KYC and further information is required, um, such as <clears throat> you know uploading your passport or a photo of you with your passport, as is typical with with exchanges and any any sort of financial institution. Um, you'll be contacted by our payment provider, um, and then they'll request the additional information, and then based on that. Your account will be will be approved or yeah or, or hopefully not denied. Um, so yeah, just just a little bit of insight into how that general process is going to work. Perfect. And one thing you did note there is that it will only be available in the web wallet. Is that right? People shouldn't look for this in the app when it's live. That, yes, that that is correct. Yes. So um, everything will be through the through the web wallet. Um, it's just a much easier. And, you know, for us, more secure way, you know, if you need to upload, part, uh, you know, in, uh, upload any information or anything like that, it's just it's much easier to go through the web platform. Uh, now, eventually, the web wallet will be fully integrated into the VV web app that is uh, currently in development now. Um, <clears throat> but until we announce that, just assume that the omi.vv.me is the, the place to go. Fantastic. And if anyone hasn't used that yet, uh, your login is the same as your VB login. It's uh, ubiquitous across all platforms. So just in case you haven't seen that. Uh, and the web platform was my next question, but you just covered that. So that's fantastic. Uh, now we have obviously a few big ticket items immutable. Um, that is well underway. Do we have any updates on that front? Immutable, what's that? Mm, what is this thing? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, no, coming together very well. Um, and yes, yeah, shout out to, oh, I, forget, uh, I forget the name uh, of the guy who did it, but the, the Immutable X rap. Um, um, very, very witty and very funny. So uh, if, if, it, if people haven't seen that, I highly recommend um, going to check it out. Um, so yeah, we're basically just down to the last final things. Um, a couple of uh, points that we're just working through with the Immutable team um, who have been very supportive uh, and also are very, very eager to uh, launch the platform as well. Um, and some of you may uh, have uh, heard that they, they did their own uh, private sale token. I, th I believe it was, was it last week, Reese? Yeah, yeah. Last yeah. Week, yeah. Um, and that's, <clears throat> you know, sort of the, the turning point for them, you know, really going live and, and, and getting their, their product out there. So um, we will be releasing some information on, uh, you know, how to use the, the token swap site, what's going to happen with exchanges, um, you know, withdrawing from um, L2 to L1, all, all of those kind of, all of that information will be uh, outlined in, in a series of articles and, and some how-to. So we just want to make sure that from a communications point of view and, uh, you know, instructional point of view, um, that we'll be putting out a lot of information for, uh, for our OMI holders out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the <clears throat> I just wanted to touch on a couple of things with Immutable. Um, now, just... You know, obviously, we're working very hard on our end. Um, you know, we got guns blazing to have everything live, uh, and uh, but by the end of September. But if it ends up being a couple of days later or whatever, like I don't want the community to stress out. You know, we're, we're obviously working very hard on our side to get this done. Uh, and as I mentioned, everything goes perfectly with development, so of course, it's <laughs> going to be no issues. Yes. Um, but just just to keep that in mind, <clears throat> you know, I, I hope the community knows by now that you know we we always deliver. Uh, maybe not on the timeline, but we always deliver. We get there. <laughs> yeah, we, we always get there. 
Um, yeah. Now, the other point is that, um, so the whole purpose of the uh, of what we're doing with Immutable now is the migration uh, from GoChain over to Immutable, and obviously everything around that with the tokens, the, the reminting of the NFTs, um, all of that kind of stuff. Now, the... Uh, and then the next step after that will be to open up the interoperability uh, in the app for those licensors or artists uh, who uh, have, have allowed their assets to go out. Um, and I just bring this up because I don't want people to think that as soon as Immutable goes live, uh, you know, the interoperability is going to be in place. Um, mm -hmm. That development is underway, but obviously we need to get the migration rolled out, um, e everything running and working fine with that. Um, and then the very first thing that will be coming out next with, the, with regard to, to Immutable will be, will be the interoperability uh, within, the, within the product. So just, just to give users a little bit of a heads up, um, it's, uh, from, our, from our perspective on a development side, you know, this is a big upgrade to the system. So we want to get the, the first phase out of the way, which is migration, make sure that you know, everyone knows, knows what they're doing with the token swap, et cetera. And then we'll move straight into the interoperability because I, I know everyone wants to sell their uh, Givenchy pride for yeah. five million dollars. <laughs> minimum, minimum. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just just while we're on that topic, um, so obviously people with with tokens will will need to perform some actions and swap their tokens. But as a VV user, am I correct that you know the user experience really shouldn't see any interruptions? Will we be Will we need to take the app offline for any amount of time to upgrade these things or, or will it be generally uninterrupted? Uh, yes, that's a great point, Reese. Um, we will be taking the app offline for the final stages of the migration. Um, <clears throat> so I don't anticipate that the app, the app will probably be down maybe three to four hours, uh, potentially, potentially less than that. Um, and yeah, that's just the last phase where we basically do, you know, massive upgrade to the back end once we've gone through the process of of minting and, and migrating all of the uh, all of the records, et cetera, over. Um, and and as I mentioned earlier, we'll 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 be sure to send out uh, you know solid communications around when that's going to happen. Absolutely, yeah, that's um, we'll, we'll get that out there for sure. Now, another thing people are waiting um, on for Immutable is to find out about the new utilities and, and what we're going to do with the OMI token. Now, I know you and I have a bit of work to do to put some info together. Do we have any sort of ETA or updates we can give people on token utility? Yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, actually, Reese, I've been doing quite a lot of work uh, in the background. Fantastic. So, um, <laughs> I, I think I've pretty much basically written the article. So that's what I like uh, to I'll hear. I'll just need you to go through and uh, give it the risk yep. once over for me. Perfect. Um, but yes, uh, by the end of September, we will be um, releasing uh, our article on the OMI utility coming to Vivi. Uh, very excited about that. Obviously, it's been a long time coming. I obviously hoped that it would be uh, in place before now, but uh, you know we've been dealing with this crazy growth spurt mm -hmm. uh, since, since January, which has uh, presented numerous uh points of excitement and, yeah. and challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to, to touch on that just so people know that, uh, that it's coming. Um, and I, I, I think we've got a pretty, pretty solid offering when it comes to OB utility uh, in the app. So please uh, keep your ear to the ground and um, keep an eye out for that announcement. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to getting that information out. And similarly, the uh, Master Collector Program. Uh, we we're looking to release some info about that pretty soon as well. Yep, exactly. So same deal. Um, I mean, we really started development on the Master Collector program, you know, way back uh, mm. in like October last year when we when we first launched. Um, and then and then of course, you know, the shitstorm that that is VV happened <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in uh, back in the beginning of the year. Uh, so the uh, and, and that kind of put a little bit of a hold uh, on the development of the master collector program. But in hindsight, it's actually been very valuable that now you know I've been able to go back and revisit it over the past couple of months um, and really just build it out based on you know a lot of user data. Um, we've pinged a, a whole bunch of people in the community to get a good understanding about you know what their expectations for master collector program are. 
and uh, yeah, again, I think um, uh, I'm very excited to get to get that out as well because uh, it's um, it, it's going to be a very cool feature. Mm, just just on that, uh, I know that we contacted yeah a few people in the community. Were their expectations generally in line with with the plan that we had already put together? Well, it was almost um, just a, a copy paste into the article. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we just leaked to the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, which is yeah. yeah, which is great. Yeah, so it's yeah. Uh, it's yeah, always good to know that. I mean, obviously, you know, we we're very well. We try to be very in tune with what um, with what our fans and users want. Um, so it's good to good to get that understanding that um, uh, that you know what we're envisioning on our side uh, reflects with the community expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, definitely the sentiment that I find as well. So that's uh, very positive. While we we touch on that, uh, I have had a few questions this week as to. Um, why we chose to reduce those edition numbers or why Marvel chose to reduce them. Do you want to add a little color there? Yeah. So the whole idea there is, you know, really just to add a bit of collectible texture to the, to the comic offering. Um, obviously we could continue to release all of these comics um, at 30,000 or 30,000 plus editions, but you know, when it comes to collecting and collectibles and, and including collectible comics, um, it's it, it's good to add a bit of uh, texture into the collectability, so there there is some content that's coming out uh, that is you know very rare or very hard to get, and and we'll continue to do that you know both on the collectible side uh, and on the comic book side. So for the for the Marvel comics anyway, you can assume that the majority of the comics uh, come out will be around thirty thousand editions, mm -hmm. but we will be sprinkling in. You know some of these. Uh, I think the coin we turned was uh, super rare, or uh, that that uh, yeah for these very mm. low for these very low runs. Um, and yep. big congratulations to anyone who got any of them, even <laughs> if it's a common, because it's still pretty low. Yes, yes, it was. It's um, we saw that in the market. I think people had kind of priced in that that rarity, which was really cool to see as well. Just a bit more uh, texture to the market, yeah. as you say. Super yeah. limited edition for sake of clarity. I don't want people to think we're adding another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. yeah we, don't, we don't want to get that confusion out there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, appreciate that, Alex. Thanks for jumping on that. We've got NYCC. What does that stand for? NYCC, NY. New York Comic Con. Mm, what have we yes. got going on? So I won't, I won't uh, touch on it for too long, but I just wanted to give people a heads up that uh, early October, I believe it's the first week of October, that we will be uh, not necessarily uh, partnering with New York Comic Con, but um, we will be having a whole range uh, of cool drops throughout that, uh, that Comic Con week. Uh, similar to the uh, to the previous Comic Con over on the West Coast, so just a heads up, stack up those gems and, and get ready for the uh, for the for the offering. We've got some yeah some really cool content coming out, and they will be con exclusive tags. They will be they will be marked as con exclusive. Yes, nice. And they will all no. be yeah more more lower run than you would typically see. Yes, so chaos is what you're saying. That's that's what that basically yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then last thing I have here is Gemgate. I guess we have a new... <laughs> <laughs> well, Gem, Gem, Gemgate is what I coined. Um, okay. and, <laughs> yeah, so the, when, when I, when I uh, mentioned Gemgate, I'm referring to the, uh, to the small bug that we had, which resulted in uh, certain users getting... Uh, more gems than they had paid for. Mm. Uh, now we understand that that you know was a bit of a surprise for users, and uh, you know may may not have uh, created the most positive sentiment. Mm. Um, but obviously, you know, as a business, if, uh, if, if if extra product goes out the door without being without being purchased, you know, we need to make um, we, we need to make up for that. And so that's that's you know the reason that we decided to move ahead with that. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, we do understand that it has created some frustration in the community. So for all of those users who have been affected, um, we will be gifting them a free secret rare um, sometime around the end of the month. Uh, it's very similar to what we did with the, uh, what was it, the Ultraman comic cover secret yes. rare giveaway uh, that we did to some users that were affected by some uh, issues earlier on in the year. So, just really, it's really just a bit of a thank you uh, and an apology for the for the frustration. Um, and yeah, we hope you you enjoy it. 
Yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure people will be more than happy with that result. And uh, just on that note, guys, we have the list of those users. So please don't send me messages demanding free collectibles. Um, as much as I would love to give them out, obviously I do not have that power. Will there be DC Digital Comics on Vivi? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And that is not a confirmation or an approval. We'll just have to see what the future holds. Got it. Okay. Uh, Nate asks, can you organize the comics a little better, perhaps by having the comic, and then if you click on it, you can choose from the five different rarities? Yes, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned earlier, well, I, I, sorry, as Reese mentioned earlier, this is comics um, for, uh, version one, uh, and we will be continuing to iterate it. Um, to improve things like better organization. Um, one of the reasons we haven't rolled that out just yet is because we have uh, you know, a fairly limited number of comics released uh, at the moment, and we have a bit of a target number in mind. And once we reach that, that uh, uh, release number, we'll start to roll out some additional features, which will just help you better organize the comics. Um, and actually on that note as well, um, we have made some updates and improvements in the app um, to get rid of that damn annoying switcher bar, which um, nobody seems to see. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad to see the back of it. So uh, one of the, uh, it could be in the next app rollout. I'll just have to, I'll have to double check with the team. Um, but the, the first step will be number one, just integrating comics into your main collection screen. So the so you'll see, you'll basically see your showrooms, then you'll see your, your collectibles, then you'll see your comics. Um, and then any comics you're reading will always be first in that list. And then like the other features within the collection, you'll be able to click the see all to go through and then see your full list of comics. Um, so that'll be the first um, rollout in terms of the, the switcher bar removal. And then that will be shortly followed by the store as well. And within the store, um, the other update that, that, that's coming into that with, the, with integrating comics is that uh, the, you know, we'll have a, like a nice big banner show up in, in the coming soon drop section or in the drop section for, for comics as well. So, uh, you know, really the feedback is, that we had from the community is that they were a little bit hard to find. You know, a lot of people were expecting to see them on the, on the store page. Um, we had a couple of limitations when we were rolling the comics out. Um, but yeah, please be assured that we'll, we'll be, we've been working hard to sort of integrate comics into the, um, into the store and the collection, just so they're a lot, a lot easier to access. Crypto Baby asks, how are the comic covers selected for each rarity? Does Marvel select them or is it, is it a joint decision with Vivi? That all comes from X percent common, X percent uncommon and so on. Um, but we work very closely with Marvel, uh, you know, on a, on a weekly, if not daily basis to you know establish the the, the rarities the, the the cover types um so yeah marvel are a very very involved partner um which we love and uh you know they provide a lot of sort of good guidance on uh, how we should be distributing these these rarities and that, that's why you see the rarities of the comics are quite different from the collectibles where with the comics you know the majority of them are common so at least you can get in there and read it uh, if you're lucky enough to get one um, but then obviously, you know, you know, you have that one in X chance of uh, getting one of the, the sort of rare recovers. Um, so, yes, uh, TLDR, uh, basically uh, that information comes from Marvel. Yeah. And just kind of further, further to that, you know, we have a lot of the classic comics and some of the more modern comics. So that's why you see uh, a reason why you see more variation um, some, a lot of times in some of the modern com comics is because, there's actually more variant covers that exist in the physical world in those later years. So um, that, yes, yeah. that, that's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, obviously a, a comics these days do come out with variant covers. Um, and so, yeah, I think I touched last time that we have two, two categories of comics coming out um, from Marvel. Uh, one is uh, Marvel, I think it's called Marvel classics, which is basically anything before, I think it's 1990, so that's, you know, your Marvel number ones, your, your What If number one. 
and as you mentioned, Alex, you know, back then they, they there wasn't this huge big comic industry, so often there aren't uh, as many variant covers to go around for those particular issues. Um, however, uh, comics, so um, it's uh, and that's something that we can we can expect to to continue moving forward. Uh, yeah, a visually impaired question. Uh, a Twitter friend that has very poor eyesight made the mistake of selling two secret rares this week at a, about 100x below the desired price because of uh, poor vision. He couldn't see the decimal point. Could there be an extra confirm screen or accessibility options added uh, in the future? Uh, yes, I think what we'll do is look to add access, uh, more accessibility features in there. Um, there, there really, there already is kind of two confirmation steps, <clears throat> you know, when, when listing a, a collectible or a comic, uh, where, you know, first step you enter in all the details and then it pops up a, a, another confirmation screen before, uh, before you actually list it. So we probably won't add a third one in there because it might become a, a bit cumbersome. Um, but a, a absolutely, um, point taken on the, um, uh, you know, the, the readability side of things. So let me um, make a note of that and see what we can do on that front. And thanks, guys, for bringing that up. That is, you know, I was in one of those spaces where Sean was speaking, and I love to hear the, the community rallying behind somebody who want, really wants to be uh, part of this family. When the showroom V2 does roll out, there will be the second type of showroom, which is called an empty space. And that effectively has all the same functionality as the showrooms now, except there are there is no showroom. Um, <clears throat> so that means that you basically have a blank canvas in which you can, you know, basically create from scratch. So uh, there will be that option as well for, you know, for users who want to get a little bit more creative outside of that um, uh, that showroom space. <clears throat> and the other, the other reason for, for creating these empty spaces is that we obviously still have the accessories feature in development where, uh, you know, for example, in this empty space um, showroom, you might be able to add things like, uh, you know, urban objects, like, you know, dumpsters or maybe old buildings, or perhaps you want to add some rocks and some trees. <clears throat> um, and then you can place all of your collectibles in these uh, kind of digital dioramas, uh, so to speak. So I'm, I'm very excited to see, uh, to have that one come out, because I think we, we're going to see, you know, a, a, another level of creativity. For a comic book drop. If I get it right and I get an edition number a thousand, does that mean I was the one thousandth, you know, buyer and I just click buy too slow, or is that just completely randomized? Realize that could be a bad question, but just curious. No, great question. There's there's no dumb questions in here. Um, the edition numbers are completely randomized. Uh, back in the early days, they were sequential, so if you were first in, you would get the the lower mints. Um, but again, you know, after listening to a lot of feedback from the community, we decided to randomize the mint so uh, you know you could you could be the 30,000th person to to get a comic and you know you still could potentially get a sub 1000 um so yeah they're, they're completely randomized ty asks uh does the market open for everybody at the same time on drop days it seems like i've lost the leading bid in auctions because i've been locked out while the clock kept ticking and others had access the market basically just is either open or the market is either closed. So there is no staggering of, of you know, who can come in and who can get it. Um, I mean, there could be a small delay, you know, as the market comes back online and that sort of propagates around the world. But um, really, from the back end point of view or the development point of view, it's really just an on-off switch. So there's no... Yeah, no special treatment for anyone. Um, and as I've mentioned previously, the market coming <clears throat> on and offline is purely based on on drop volume. So if something sells out in five seconds, and then we, uh, you know, the the load on the server starts to diminish, say ten minutes after that, then the market will automatically come online. But sometimes, uh, you know, that that the server load might be, you know, very high for say thirty minutes or forty minutes. Uh, after the drop, so it's uh, the the market coming online is very much dictated by by that. And a follow up to that, have we considered uh, maybe pausing auction end times while the uh, market is down? 
Um, they they actually are they are paused okay. when when the market is down. Um, I believe that for the 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 auctions are extended for the period of time that the market is offline. Uh, obviously, it would be a little bit unfair if yeah you know your auction finished while the market was closed. So um, I'm almost certain that 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 feature's in place. Okay, great. I just had a, I've had a few questions about that in the past, so it's good to know that uh, maybe people just need to hard refresh the app or whatever the case it may be. Would you ever sell digital animation cells, for instance, like the old hand-drawn production cells, but with new animated movies or shows? You could have a blind box for a movie where every frame is a kind of a 1-1 NFT. Buyers would get a unique NFT and then you sell like 100,000 plus. Collectors can buy their favorite moments. So essentially, uh, you know, art, 2D art, but it's an animation cell, but you own that particular cell or and I'm sure that can be translated into any number of use cases, but uh, I thought that was an interesting case. And I think yeah, and, and that is a that is a great idea. Um, e- even in the in the physical world of collecting, uh, in fact, I'm almost certain that I've seen like a thousand or five thousand film sales uh, down at David's house. <clears throat> uh, so I know, I know I know it is something that is that is very very collectible. Uh, now the great thing about the VV platform is. You know, really, we we can roll out whatever type of uh, collectible digital asset um, that that we that we want to or need to. Um, a, a, as you guys know, you know, we started off with the three D collectibles. Now we've moved into comics. Um, there will be uh, you know one of one artworks coming at some point in the future. Um, and the yeah, I mean, it could be a very natural progression um, with some of the licensors that we're working with that we could move into. Um, you know, maybe a hundred thousand film cells with each one being a one of one. Um, yeah, no confirmation on that, but um, it, as, as it is a very desirable collectible item in the physical world, um, I would certainly hope that we'd see something like that in the future. Um, I know on a Sendex and certain exchanges, if you're making a spot market purchase, either I think like greater than five percent or less than five percent of like what the current market value is, you get a prompt. That says, you know, this is above or below 5%. Um, are you sure you want to proceed? Um, maybe in VV, if we could have like uh, either the last sold price or the medium price, the price that you're listing at is like maybe 20% above or below either way. Um, it might just give you a prompt saying, you know, your price is like 20% higher or greater than whether the medium price or last sold price is Do you want to proceed. Something simple like that I think would be quite nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we and and just on that note, so there are two features coming back into the app, um, hopefully very soon. Uh, one it will be the when you're looking at a collectible, whether you own it or whether you're looking at it in the market, um, it will display the floor price on, on the collectible view screen. And uh, if you own that collectible, it will also show the last price that you paid. Um, and yeah, you touch on a on a good point, Kay. That <clears throat> you know, I see some uh, random very random purchases go through the market for, for example, like a very high mint common going for like 10,000. Uh, I'm sure there's something uh, uh, suspect going on there, but um, yeah. And that, that we will be introducing something like that. Uh, you know, some indication if you're, if you're selling it too low or selling it too high, that was actually the whole purpose of the, there is a feature in the app now called um, appraisal. Uh, unfortunately, that feature is completely broken and has always been broken. <laughs> so, um, yes, so, so we, we did have good intentions with, uh, with that one for, for the exact reason that you bring up. So the user has an understanding of, uh, you know, is this Marvel number one worth 15 grand or is it worth 1.5 grand? Um, so, yes, d- definitely on the roadmap. Okay, and then one last one from me back to kind of app features. Uh, Juan asks, when can we use the app offline? I assume for AR photos and digital comic reading. Mm. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, technology in the app that has to link back to the server. Um, Right now, running the app offline is a fairly complicated upgrade. Um, and can pose a number of, uh, of different problems. Um, like, for example, would have to limit any kind of access to the market or anything that requires, uh, you know, any sort of live data. Um, however, items that are basically downloadable content, like, um, you know, the, the 3D assets that come down, um, uh, and we're doing an upgrade to the comics now, so <clears throat> rather than each page being streamed, 
uh, each time you open the comic, it will basically download the pages as some form of bundle, and then they'll they'll be able to sit on your device and and uh, hopefully you'll be able to read them offline as the as the first instance. <laughs> How's it going? I look, I'm just here because I love the community so much, and uh, I, I I understand the rationale and everything that you guys are doing. I've been doing it from a physical space for the last 20 years. So to see it done in digital is joyful for me. Is this a, is this a transition you, you kind of foresaw coming before we came along, Jeremy? We, is that kind of where your head was at? Well, in I mean, I'll tell you this, uh, not n the first time I met, you know, Dan and David and Al, And showed me this concept and my first thought was there's no way in hell that's gonna be viable <laughs> <laughs> so i so remember no, that I mean, but now but but i will say it didn't take long and and certainly it's it makes so much sense the more you understand the world uh that we live in now with nfts and blockchain and and collectible digital assets just make a tremendous amount of sense i think to everyone now Yes, I couldn't agree more. And, and I think we've really seen that those same value propositions, the same things that people attach their own value to really do translate into the digital realm. So it's, um, it's very uh, satisfying to watch it play out. As long as you execute well, and what you guys have done has been mind boggling with no marketing and, and really not pushing the word out because you uh, certainly were in beta for quite some time. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, we do. Uh, for me, that's just, that's really just sorry. a shout out to the community. I mean, it's, we we never anticipated the um, the uptake. Um, <clears throat> and I think I went into YouTube the other day and I typed in Vivi, and I think I was just scrolling for like five minutes of, of all the videos uh, and the content out there. So, uh, honestly, big shout out to the community. It's you know you guys who have been instrumental in in helping Vivi get to where it is today. Um, and yeah, you know we love hearing the feedback. And, and actually, on that note, um, I don't think I mentioned it last time, but if, if anyone does have any features or feature requests, there is a channel uh, in the VV Discord. Uh, I believe it's called Feature Requests that we do keep quite a close eye on. So feel free to uh, you know do a brain dump in there if you've got any any great ideas. Mm, I might just on that note suggest that if you do uh, share some ideas, maybe scroll up a little bit and just make sure you're not repeating uh, what a few other people may great have said. Point. Um, yes, but definitely keep those coming. Flash uh, Jeremy, happened. do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Jeremy, do you... Listen, I, the only oh, question I have <clears throat> is... You know, actually, it's just a request. Don't put me out of business, please. Thank you. <laughs> hey, well, you, you're just, just, you're just going to have to join the, um, join the BB family. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Wonderful. Oh, well, pleasure chatting to you, Uncle Jeremy. We'll see you Thank next you. week. Thank you. I'll be back. <laughs> I was wondering if you're going to... If you're going to have anything that sort of uh, lets you display these collectibles or comics in your room, like I know that uh, there's one company that does these sort of NFT screens where you can have your NFT on a screen. Uh, I think that would look really cool for something like the Pride or comics where you can sort of choose which, uh, which cover to display and maybe even read them on that sort of screen to just to hang on your wall. And... Um, I was also thinking like for the collectibles, uh, if there was any thought of, and this might be something way further down the line, I don't know much about this, but doing like having the option to have a hologram. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so David and I have in the early days looked into quite a lot of hardware for, for, the, for that exact reason. You know, the digital frames are far more accessible these days. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, even, even a TV can be utilized uh, in, in this day and age as well as a, as, as a digital frame of sorts. So um, de definitely not in 2021, but um, it is something we'll more than likely revisit in, in 2022. Um, whether we bring something out that is a, a piece of physical hardware, I don't know, <clears throat> or whether we, uh, you know, perhaps develop an app or, or whatever we need to. Um, so you can link your your collectibles or comics in
same way that I, you know, set up my <clears throat> uh, my existing physical comics. Um, the hologram one, that, I mean, it really just comes down to technology. I mean, we're not going to develop that kind of tech ourselves because we're, you know, purely digital. However, there there is a bunch of um, hologram uh, type products that we did investigate, uh, I think it was last year, <clears throat> um, that were pretty good as well. And, so, and I think it's really just about, you know, making sure that whatever product, if we do choose one, um, it's, you know, it's affordable, it's accessible, um, and it, it produces a, a, a really good product. Um, the Some of the holographic stuff is still a little bit, mm, you know, not, not quite where it's where it should be at the moment and you never know ar glasses might even come out before that kind of technology <clears throat> really starts to take off so um yeah it's definitely uh, on on the list but um nothing too immediate we've, we've definitely got a few more things on the uh, on the boiler at the moment question just on that dan i mean in terms of personal opinion do you think that ar supersedes uh holographics like you know do, do you see that being the direction of, of this kind of technology well i mean anyone who's heard any of my early amas knows that i'm a huge believer and also very hopeful that you know one day we'll all be wearing some form of ar glasses or contact lens that we can walk into our house to see all of our cool vv collectibles <clears throat> uh scattered all, all around um but mm -hmm. yeah i think the i mean my personal view is we, we all know that the you know the, the the tech giants are working on uh, working on on AR glasses across the board you mm -hmm. know for Microsoft's Hololens and the forever rumored Apple AR glasses <laughs> um, forever yeah, rumored. yeah. Uh, so yeah I, I I do think that you know I mean when something like that comes out it, it kind of supersedes the need for a hologram um, yeah. I, I guess to start off with the glasses are probably going to be fairly expensive so not everyone is going to have them so you know there could there could be a window for for, for holograms but I, yeah I personally think mm -hmm. that will be superseded by uh, some kind of cool wearables AR yeah you know there's no secret that you know Omi's a startup we're already doing millions in revenue and with the growth of VV, it, it it makes sense for the older things that came out in the beginning, such as the unicornos and the myrmicorns to go up in price. And I say this because, you know, there's only, what, like 6,000 each for like the commons or whatever. And when we look mm -hmm. at OpenSea, we look at CryptoPunks and say uh, the bait monkeys, it's really just the same object with like different color variations. And these things are still pretty cheap. So are people sleeping on them, would you say? Um, I mean, it's difficult to know, really. The, the you know, the market, the oh, sorry, the floor value of any of any collectible really comes down to how many people are desiring it. Um, but but I, I I also have the same opinion of what you do that generally anything that comes out, you know, like five years from now, anything from season one um, will more than likely be quite sought after because they, you know, we were minting much lower numbers back then. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, often in the collectible world, those, those sort of first appearances or early, early editions um, do often garner a higher price. Um, but really, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I mean, if the member corners are cheap now, geez, snap them up. <laughs> <laughs> Sweep the floor. Qu quickly quickly goes to the market <laughs> to buy all the member corners. Yeah, all member corners. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's a good spot. Did you have any other follow-ups there, Brad? Or does that help you? Uh, uh, one Pokemon. <laughs> Who knows? That's fast today. Knows? That's pretty good, fam. Yeah. You shouldn't have even <laughs> given him that opportunity to ask that. Because I know. I know. I lined, person. I lined it up. I lined it up. That's my bad. All right. I know that Yan DNA from Pack Protocol is coming out. Is there anything in the pipeline that you know have to work with that um, to make sure that 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 the NFTs are, are are secure and safe? And then the other thing is is um, yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> Great. Th thanks, Brad. You've started off a, uh, a train now. Um, so, I mean, in terms of the security, that obviously within VV we store a significant amount of value for our users, and that's, you know, holding the NFTs that they own or gems that are in their wallet or OMI that is storing. So, you know, we have significant security practices in place already, and it would we would really only look to integrate 
other solutions if they provided something beyond what we were doing now, um, which we don't have any any immediate plans for. But you know, obviously, as these these new protocols come out, and they if they do offer uh, some extended functionality that we think will will benefit the users and and then that the users want, then we're more than open to to look into that. Brian asks, can we get the same countdown format on auctions just like the one before the comic drops? Yes, we will be. Um, the market auction needs to go through a little bit of an overhaul. Um, and as part of that, um, we will be introducing the, the, the more granular countdown. So you'll be able to see that it's going down to seconds. It'll be more live um, and, and a couple of other features. I was thinking about the VVverse and you get an NFT staking and perhaps a leveling feature, you know, while you're staking the NFTs that sort of levels them up and perhaps um, you guys would uh, name it the trap house gym where people can stake their NFTs, make them stronger, level them up. Uh, <laughs> The trap house, which, which love, might, love, love <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. It, it's trademark, um, and it, it, it could provide things with leveling up, like access to more accessories, things like that in the future. I don't know. Let's say you have uh, something like a Pikachu that you uh, you know stake or something, and it can level up. Uh, that, I think that would be pretty cool to get at a surfboard or something. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is a cool idea, and, and we, we absolutely will have some form of, of staking. Um, and how that's going to all play out will be revealed in the, uh, the documents that we'll be, we'll be putting out in the coming weeks. Cool, yeah. If, if it becomes called the Trap House Gym, just send me an email uh, so I know ahead of time. <laughs> well, how about, how about I'll, just, um, I'll, I'll buy the name off you for a Donny. Hot soul. <laughs> <laughs> nice doing business. So, when does season two end and season three begin? <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah, so, to your first question, um, P and me, I'm sure we can work something out. Uh, season two ends on October 15. So, get ready for season three. It's not 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 far <laughs> off now. Um, so I guess my question to you is, how do you work as a team and what's happening on the ground, especially for your developers? Um, number one, complaints. Uh, don't don't look at any of them. Um, <laughs> you know, just the, uh, yes, just the no, odd no. little thing. Yeah, the other one, yeah. Um, no, no, th thanks for the shout out. We I, obviously, as a, as a technology team, um, we do work very hard. Um, luckily, we're still quite a small team, so that means that we can be very agile. Uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we're always running or developing multiple concurrent upgrades or, or new features uh, at any one time. And, and when we see some feedback coming from the community, like, oh, your comics suck because they can't tilt. Um, you know, we, we generally jump on those things and start to prioritize them a bit quicker. But basically, the way the team works on the ground is uh, we work uh, 25 hours a day, eight days a week, and a shitload right. of caffeine. <laughs> okay. Is basically how it goes. <laughs> yep. Fair enough. Thank you. But that, 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 for the we are... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we are all uh, remote as well. Which, really? Um, wow. You know, all of us and is it a global yeah. team? Yeah. Yeah, it is now, isn't it? It's pretty, uh, we've got most bases covered, I think. Awesome. Yeah, um, so we, we, we probably won't create our own IP to any great uh, uh, deal. Um, you know, really, we are in the business of working with, you know, these, these major brands to, to help them enter into this uh, NFT and digital collectible world. Um, however, in saying that, you know, we will be releasing um, a whole range of, of accessories that uh, ultimately we will be designing and creating <clears throat> Um, which I guess effectively will be a, a sort of a VV brand. Um, and there might be a few other things, like, you know, maybe you can um, add a, a cool VV logo to your showroom or a big V or maybe like, a you know, the Omi O. You might be able to add those kind of items. So I guess uh, technically they will be VV released, but we, we probably won't go down the path of, of, of trying to create our own IP, like the, you know, the next Batman or the next Iron Man. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll leave that to the professionals. 
<laughs> Adding a David U hairline to your collectibles. <laughs> well, we, we all know that's number one request. The highest request. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so with the migration of the NFTs onto the blockchain on Immutable X, so obviously certain licensors are going to allow the um, the sale on OpenSea and the like total ownership of the assets. Now, with the licensors that don't agree to that, are they going to be kept off the blockchain for the time being, or will they will they move across and be held back in some other way? Uh, no, so everything will is, is is minted on chain. So you know everything we create is is an NFT, um, and I wouldn't say that the uh, the licensors who don't want to do it. I, I would actually, you know, my perspective on on it is that it is something that is going to happen. Um, you know, we already see massive demand out there for it, and you know th these licensors are smart people. You know, they see that OpenSea does you know three billion in revenue in a month. Um, and their job is to ultimately to, you know, to make money out of the IP that they that they own. So, uh, personally, I believe that we, we are going to see interoperability across the board. Um, it might just take longer, obviously, for some of these uh, uh, more sensitive IPs. Um, but yeah, to, to to go back to the to the first part of your question is that yes, everything will be an NFT. You will be able to look it up. There will just be certain restrictions on. Uh, some licensors whether you can send that nft out of the app or not i, I want to know <laughs> when is Edo coming out like i have been waiting mm. forever and a day with the wedding dress and he's not coming to the altar i need to know when he's gonna drop <laughs> Edo, Edo, who's Edo? Uh, <laughs> up? did you forget about <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't forget about Edo because uh, I get reminded every day by by some sort of private message on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean I no promises, but I'm hoping that Edo will be out before the end of season two. So Q3, the big success story was comics, which which is amazing to see. Um, can in Q4 can the collectibles get a bit of love and attention? Is there anything you have in your back pocket that you can share with us for Q4 and collectibles and specifically remote control vehicles. Is that in, in the pipeline for Q4? <laughs> I've, I've been waiting for that one to come up again. <laughs> um, I, I can't say specifically what what is going to be coming out, although I can say that it's cool. Um, but, you know, as, as our collectibles evolve, um, you know, as, as the OGs know, you know, back in the day we had the, you know, all the Batman black and white range, which, you know, all still looks amazing, but they are sort of static um, static models that have come directly from the, <clears throat> the physical world statue. Um, but uh, as, as the, the product evolves, you've seen that, you know, we've now got a lot of really cool animated characters and, you know, more interactivity. So um, it is my plan to make sure that we continue that trajectory. Um, and I hope that in the future, you know, we can have a lot more fun with with controllable assets. You know, like I mentioned earlier, and this is no confirmation, um, you know, being able to drive a T-Rex around or, you know, if you had a, a Captain America, you know, you could make him run around the floor and do some cool things. Ultimately, that's, <clears throat> that's where we want to end up. So, you know, just to add more and more. Uh, utility and more features and and just more fun with the with the collectibles. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically my answer. Cool, thanks, Emil. Uh, one really really quick thing. You don't even really have to answer this. It's not kind of a question, but I was watching on Netflix uh, the toys that made us. You know that show. It's like reliving kind of yes, toys. I know. And I was looking at like, uh, and I was thinking with the comics, they're kind of they're an existing entity that people can latch on to and they have done and obviously the, the value done spiked and I was looking thinking like existing entities in the toy world so let's say you had your Star Wars series one and you had your Luke Skywalker imagine if it was NFT in the blister pack like it was originally purchased and you could take them out of the blister pack and play with them and put them back in the blister pack um, and I just thought it'd be really cool if you had exact replicas of existing nostalgic toys is that something you might have considered? I don't uh, mean absolutely. specifically and, Star um, Wars, but just generally. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, no confirmation of Star Wars yeah, at no, all. No, I just mean generally. 
um, <laughs> but yeah, we we have spoken with a with a number of our licensors about uh, pairing the NFTs with some kind of digital collectible. Um, nothing has really come to fruition on, on that front yet. But you know, I personally think it would be awesome if, um, <clears throat> say, for example, the next Batman Black and White that comes out. Uh, you know, because I, I think they only do like. 5,000 editions in the in the physical world, uh, maybe a whole lot more now that they've, they've got a lot more fans through Vivi. Mm. Um, but yeah, I personally think, uh, you know, what, what you suggest would be very cool that, you know, I can buy the physical statue and then within that I get a code for the, you know, for the NFT version of it. Um, and then I can I can claim that within Vivi. That has been, uh, I think, in, in our very, very early pitches to the uh, to the licensors to, to have some kind of feature like that. So it would be super cool, but we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes on that front. And is, um, are we going to have um, any comic books signed by the artists? Great question, actually. We do have a, and I think I've touched on this um, uh, previously, that we will be rolling out a uh, like a digital signature feature in the future. Um, which will allow you, for example, if you go to Comic-Con or any of these kind of con events, um, <clears throat> that you will be able to take your, your phone up to the artist. Say, for example, let's just say if Jermaine Rogers was there doing, doing signings, um, you know, you might, you might better take your, uh, one of your choices rabbits up and then he can sign that. Um, and then it will, be, <clears throat> it will be basically bundled with, with that NFT. So you would then be able to sell uh, that NFT with, a, with an official signature from the artist. And uh, our plans are that, you know, again, all of that information is going to be recorded uh, on chain. And then in addition to that, um, you know, in the in the physical world of collecting, if you ever go and get something signed, <clears throat> you always have to have a photo or, or some kind of proof that it was the artist that actually signed it. And this is something that I learned from the... Um, uh, level 9000 collector, a.k.a. David <laughs> Um Yeah, that you always need to have some kind of proof. So basically the way that that system will work is you'll take your collectible up, um, you'll hit the signature button, a, you know, the, a, a screen will come up allowing the artist to sign um, on the screen. And uh, at the same time, it will basically prompt them that, that, that we're going to take a photo of them and then all of that information is recorded. So basically you're getting the signature, you're getting the authenticity, um, it's all recorded on chain and then it's associated with the, <clears throat> with the NFT. Uh, now that one is still fairly in the scoping phase at the moment, um, but as, uh, as collectors, you know, we know that that is a, a huge part of the world of collecting. So um, it is on the roadmap. That idea sounds great, thank you. So that's the video, my friends. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. And if you learned something or enjoyed the content, feel free to drop a like on the video to help me in the YouTube algorithms and consider subscribing for more content like this. I think enough was said in the video, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Very bullish times. Lots of stuff happening this week, next week, and the months to follow. So yeah, just uh, buckle up because I think we're going for a ride in the vertical direction but with that being said i'm not a financial advisor uh I could be, because i'm not an expert i am just your friendly neighborhood genius sharing his thoughts and opinions on this awesome company and this amazing app and uh yeah so take everything that i say with a grain of salt because i could be wrong but once again thank you for watching and i will catch you guys in my next video until then peace out and huddle strong my friends uh, later